on from our previous episode where we demonstrated how to create a mobile backend in Oracle Mobile Cloud Service. In this episode, we want to quickly demonstrate to you how to test a mobile backend, both from the MCS user interface, but also remotely. G'day, I'm Chris Muir from the Oracle Mobile Platform team. So, like I just said, we want to show you how now to test the mobile backends, but of course at this stage in the episodes, we haven't taught you how to configure an Android or iOS app to call MCS from the MCS client SDK. That avenue will be left to be explored in later episodes. So what are we going to do instead? Rather, there are two other ways to test the API, which I'd like to show you here. One option is that of using the MCS and its user interface itself. It does provide testing facilities within the overall user interface. The second option is to test the MCS service from a remote client, not a mobile application, but a remote client, which is akin to how it would actually be used and tested in real life. Let's look first how to test this from the MCS user interface. If we return to the local weather custom API, we exposed in the truck logistics mobile backend, which was created in the last episode, and select the test button, the MCS user interface actually gives us a test interface for calling the API. We can see that this local weather API provides a single get URL method called sites, and it expects as parameters a location where we could specify a city like my hometown Perth. Now before we test this, Questionally, who defined all this? The API, the endpoint, with its URLs and its parameters. For the purposes of these videos, we've pre-created the local weather API and a local weather MCS connector. It depends on. We've done this so we can just focus on the mobile backend for now. You'll be taught how to create these other MCS concepts in further episodes, so don't sweat the details. We just can't teach you everything all in one go. Next, under authentication, we need to enter the mobile backend name and version and the username and password to test the mobile backend with. The mobile backend name and version are always required because an API is always executed in context of a mobile backend. But the API itself can be used by multiple backends, so this needs to be specified because otherwise MCS doesn't know which backend you're executing this API through. In turn, because this is a protected API requiring the local weather role we configured in the last episode, we also need to specify a user to test the service with who has the role we just defined, the local weather role. So in this case, we're going to use the Big Mac user that we created in the earlier episode. Finally, we hit the test endpoint button that fires off a HTTP request, and then we can see the response. Now, assuming all things go well, we'll see an error code of 200 indicating success, the HTTP headers that we returned, and the actual payload, showing a rather balmy 11 degrees Celsius, that is 52 degrees Fahrenheit in Perth today. Using the MCS user interface API test tool is all good and well, but it would be nice to be able to test the exposed mobile backend services remotely, as this represents a real test that is closer to real world mobile use case, rather than testing through the user interface testing utility that could be hiding details from us, we just don't know. However, we don't want to build a whole mobile app to do this at this point. We haven't really learned how to load the MCS client SDK into our mobile applications. Because the mobile backend services are exposed as REST services, however, luckily you have a wealth of tools that are designed to test REST services remotely. One such example is the ever handy curl command line tool, natively available on Linux and Mac based systems and downloadable as an extension for Windows. Curl, amongst many functions, allows you to issue HTTP requests to a remote server such as MCS via the command line. Now, rather than trying to abstractly describe Curl, let's just knuckle in with a real example in context of MCS. First thing to notice with this Curl call is typically it's ended on one command line, but we'll split it across multiple lines for readability's sake by using a command line continuation character. As I'm using a Mac, in the Mac terminal, I use a backslash character to do this. On Windows, you use the caret character. Returning to the curl core here, notice that the first parameter is dash i. Now, what this does is it just prints out more diagnostics on the return result so we can see what is going on. The first dash h parameter in turn, Oracle Mobile Backend ID, represents the mobile backend ID value derived from the settings page of the mobile backend in the MCS user interface we saw earlier. 
So this is to be sent as a HTTP header in the HTTP request. I'll just copy and paste the value in as it's too hard to type. The second dash h parameter requests a return payload content type of application JSON from this REST web service. Next, the double dash request parameter shows a HTTP GET call requesting from the defined URL here. That is the base URL plus the path for our custom API exposed through the MCS mobile backend. The base URL is exposed via the mobile backend in the user interface that we saw earlier, while the service path and parameters are defined through the local weather custom API we pre-created for this demo that we also saw earlier. Finally, the minus U option includes the username and password of the mobile app user who has authority to access this service. In this case, curl will automatically change this to an authorization basic HTTP header on the HTTP request for you. On executing this command and hopefully receiving a successful response with a HTTP error code of 200, we'll again see the resulting payload from the MCS service. There you go, you received a little taster of how easy it is to work with MCS and the mobile backends. You don't need a mobile application to actually test with, you can see you can use curl, and you're not even an MCS expert yet, but we've got you up and running. From here, I encourage you to check out the next episodes where we'll take a deep dive into the mobile backend features to round out your knowledge.